Howdy, Saints. Uh, there's some really great stuff going on in the house right now. Uh, me and the wife, we had words a while back. And y'all have seen me speak, and I can get what they call passionate about things, and I do. And it came down to this. I asked her to do something. One thing. This is what it ended up. This is what, what the discussion was about. This is the end of the discussion. And she asked me what could she do uh, as to honor me as her husband. And I asked her one thing. I took down her Bible. I laid it in front of her. I said, read this. Get back in this. Because she had been like many of us, and, and Google has become her Bible. Uh, and, and that's not a good place to be. So we had been, she had been reading to me. I'm not reading to her, she's been reading to me. And, and, and it's such a, really, it's, I've had, the house has been such peace here, more than usual. Uh, lately, and, and we started out in First Thessalonians. She read a chapter or so, what they call a chapter, uh, and then we would come back the next day and continue. Well, we've gone through First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, and we're now in Galatians, which is is an odd book for us because it's really not dealing with converted Gentiles as much as the converted Israelites. <clears throat> but this is what I said that I wanted to do. I said, this is something that I haven't done in a while. I haven't really got down with pen and paper. Uh, and I wanted to go through First Thessalonians and as we go and write down the things that Paul prayed for. Now, we see little prayers in there and, and, and he says, amen, it continues on. But if we go through the entire letter, we get a piece of paper, get a pad and a pencil. And go through one more. We'll see so many things that Paul prayed for the saints. So today will be this is First Thessalonians. It's, look, there's a whole lot, and it's on the back. So I'm going to read some things that I've gone through, and maybe it will help you, and 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 so you can see a a, a way of doing some things. Uh, you know, it says my people without vision perish. And, and brothers and sisters, my vision is is not for the kingdom to come. But that's going to happen. I, I, ain't nothing no Anthony can do to stop it, slow it down, hinder it, nothing. Matter of fact, in God's eyes, it's a done deal already. Yeah. <laughs> my vision is for saints to become perfected that perfect saint that people say we can't be whereas god says we can through his grace we can become that perfect saint that's a mature saint unlike a child who is swayed to and fro with doctrines and unlike eve who could be deceived and and etc etc so this is first thessalonians <clears throat> and this is i'm gonna read it just like i wrote it down uh uh, Paul starts out like he starts out many of his epistles, uh, uh, and it, this is to me this is what was on Paul's heart all the time for all the saints, not just Thessalonica, but all the saints. So Paul prays, "Grace be with you, peace be with you." He prays that. The saints become perfect, that which is lacking in one's face. faith. See, we have we can be lacking in our faith. And Paul prays that we, oh, we, we don't be like that, that we become perfect in that which is lacking in one's faith. I pray that the Lord to increase and become bountiful in love. He prays for the saints to increase in their love, and not just them increase in their love, but become bountiful in their love. It's like if I got a cup, and I went to the water uh, faucet, and I poured it up, see, I didn't have no water, and it would increase 
and water, and eventually it will be so bountiful it's just running over. That's the picture of what Paul is speaking of, for the Lord to increase you, and you become bountiful in love. That the Lord establishes your heart unblameable in holiness. That's something ain't taught. To, and and I, I've, I've never, and I'm going to tell you the truth. When I did go, I've never heard these things taught. That the Lord establishes your heart. In other words, get that heart steadfast and secure, unblameable in holiness unblameable in holiness that's that perfect saint remember perfect that which you're lacking in your faith and it, it talks about so let me go on. i'll start speaking and i want to stick to the script here sorry uh paul prays that you walk pleasingly unto god yeah we're not just to walk we're to walk pleasingly unto god another thing ain't talked a whole lot Paul prays that we become steadfast in the Lord. Another thing ain't taught. We ain't got, what's being taught is it's not about being steadfast in the Lord. It's that the Lord is faithful and, and et cetera, et cetera, and that's true. But we as saints need to become steadfast in the Lord. Now, what that means is our gospel. Our gospel. Paul prays that you abstain from fornication. Paul prays that brotherly love abounds among you. Abounds. Abounds is a word that we don't use much. You ought to go look at it because it's used a lot in Scripture when it talks about fruit and being fruitful. You know, I'm going to tell you this, 2 Peter 1. <laughs> Paul prays that we be taught Paul prayed for, I put it this way, when Paul wrote this, Paul prayed that old brother Anthony, who he had never met all these thousands of years later, he prayed that brother Anthony would be taught the love of God by God. Man, think about that. The Lord prayed for that also. So, Paul prays that you study to be quiet. <laughs> Stop, Paul. Praise that you do your own business. You remember old Peter? Peter said, Well, what about John? And the Lord said, Hey, don't worry about John. You worry about yourself. Paul, praise that you, you, you do your own business. Paul prayed that, that we are to walk honestly toward the unbelievers. Paul prayed that we would not be ignorant, unlearned. Because an unlearned individual can be deceived. Easily deceived. An unlearned individual can be deceived. Paul prayed that we comfort one another with our gospel. We comfort one another with our gospel. We don't comfort one another with all that worldly stuff. There's one way we comfort each other. One, our gospel. Now, there's many aspects in that we can comfort each other, but it still has to be our gospel. Paul prays that you do not become overtaken. Now, that's, that's, I, I can, I, I fear a lot of brothers and sisters out there have been overtaken. They've been overthrown. And if you'll go with 1 Corinthians 10, you'll see that, remember that, uh, walk pleasingly unto God. Do not become overthrown. Do not become overtaken. Go to 1 Corinthians 10 and read where many was overthrown and God was not pleased with them. And saints, you need to understand what happens to those people like that. Paul prayed that we be watchful and sober. Revelation 16, 15. Blessed saints that are watchful that their garment has not been spotted with the world. That they're found... And, and, and those are the blessed saints. Paul prayed that we wear the armor of God. The first, very first epistle. The very first words that God gave Paul to speak to us in our gospel. The armor is mentioned. Already right off the bat. Not the full armor, but it's mentioned. 
Paul pray that you esteem highly those over you. And I fear that a lot of people, they esteem a lot of people that are not over them. Because the ministry of Satan can sit up there and preach righteousness, but will not teach you how to live. What was that? Unblameable in holiness. And they're esteeming them highly. And you dare not speak against them. And I'll just throw some names out there. John MacArthur. Charles Stanley. A whole bunch of them. Now, Brother Andy, how do you know that they're not called men of God? I'm not saying they was never called men of God. I have no doubt that they're, I have no doubt because it says they're going to come out from among us to make disciples unto themselves. <coughs> and I cannot say that they had not had that believing moment and become sealed in the Spirit until the day of redemption. I can't say that, but I can say this. I can look at their lifestyles, listen to their doctrine, and I know they've sold out. So if they sold out, they're not over me no more. Saints, there are still people out there call to God that have not sold out. They're out there. you got to find them. I pray I never sell out. And I, and, 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 and I pray that you pray for me that I never sell out. And that's mentioned in this as well. We'll get to it. That we have peace among ourselves. Wow, okay, that we, Paul prayed, we have peace among ourselves. Okay, let's just be honest. You, I don't see it. I don't see it. Really, I don't. Good Lord, you go to uh, social media and it's just back and forth, back and forth. There's no peace. There's no peace. It's my theology against your theology and we're going to battle it out. You have peace among yourselves. You know how we get peace among ourselves? We become united in our gospel. And it takes baby steps. Like I spoke on the other day. On this trinity and oneness. First, we have to come into unity in that the scripture does speak of trinity. Three, working as one. Together, in unity, for one purpose. We have trinity, we have oneness. Works. There's dead works, good works. We have to come in unity that there are two types of works, and there's not just one because a lot of people just, they see works and they just, you can't talk to them. You need to come in unity that there's two types of works spoken of in scriptures. And it's things like that. We need unity. And then through the unity, we will have peace among ourselves. That you warn, Paul prays that you warn the unruly. Paul prays that you comfort the feeble-minded. Paul prays that you support the weak. Now, brothers and sisters, unruly, feeble-minded, and weak is, is spoken of, yes, in a physical, but more of a spiritual speaking. Paul says, we should honor the brothers that are weaker in the faith. Personally, I don't see them around here. I don't have any converted Israelites that's trying to come out of Mosaic law, so I don't have any of those weaker brothers. And in truth be told, like I've said, there is not one Jew that is still in the Mosaic ways and laws. Why? Because there's no sacrificing going on. Oh, they 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 had their their things, but and even though they ain't professed Christ, they ain't turned their hearts yet. They're still into Moses, but they're not really into Moses either. I don't know where they're at. They're just lost. Those are the weak, the feeble minded, feeble minded. Does not mean what the world might classify as a feeble mind. Unruly. Okay. Paul prays. Now listen up on this. Oh, this is all kind of through scripture. Paul prays that you never render evil for evil. Saints do not do that. In word or deed. Do we render evil? Do we return, return evil for evil? Do we repay evil for evil? Never. Never. Ain't no buts, what is. Never. And then we get into 
a really good part of it. This is the closing of it. Paul prays that we rejoice always, not for all things. I'm not going to rejoice because somebody got cancer, but they should rejoice in it, knowing it's temporary. It's temporary. I'm not going to rejoice in me getting arthritis in my knees and my feet or my, my wife being in the shape she's in. I'm not going to rejoice for that, but in it, I rejoice. Even though, no matter what comes. Should we rejoice because we lose a job and lose an income and lose a house? No. We rejoice in it that it's all temporary. When we understand that everything is temporary here and, and nothing we do here in this earthly realm is going to matter to one hill of beans. It is what we lay up for treasures in the spiritual realm. So we rejoice always. And that we pray without ceasing. Now, this is something that I'm, I'm just, I'm really quite honestly sure that a, a, a high 90, 99% of people don't do. Pray without ceasing. Now, does that mean that we should always be going up, up, up? No. Under the new covenant, under our gospel, we have opened one on one, instant. All we got to do is go to the throne. Matter of fact, we ought to stay at the throne of grace because <laughs> we need it 24 7. We do. We pray that you give thanks in everything. We pray that you do God's will. Another thing a lot of people don't understand what is God's will for old brother Anthony? God has but one will. Yeah, you know, there are different aspects within it, but God has one will for old brother Anthony here. That I not be conformed unto the world, which is a hard thing to do because I was already conformed to the world, but be transformed into the image of his dear and precious son, my Lord, my Savior, Christ Jesus. That's God's good and perfect will. That's it. God's will is not for me to have a job, a new car, a new house. God, none of that, that. None of that's God's will. God has but one will, one good and perfect will. All right. Now here's where a lot of other saints, and I'm telling you, it's happening. It happens daily. You can read it just by their comments. You know, I, I, I comment on some videos. I, you know, I've never actually watched the video. I could care less about the video. Really, I do. I can look at the title and tell you I don't have to do that video. Uh, most of them are questions that will, are, are foolish questions. Remember what a foolish question is. It's a question presented to create discord. That's a foolish question. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of these videos, their title alone, I just tell old brother Andy, hey, you don't even watch this thing. So I go to the comments and I try to help in perfecting of the saints. Some listen, some take heed, some don't. But listen to this. Paul prays that we do not quench the Holy Spirit. Paul prays that we despise not the prophesyings of those that are. Paul prays that you prove all things like those noble Bereans. Paul prays that you hold fast to that which is good. Think about it, brother and sister. I mean, be honest. Just just for a moment, be honest. Are, are you quenching the Holy Spirit? Are, are, are you quenching the Holy Spirit? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a an honest question. And if, if your answer is, well, I don't really understand what quenching the spirit is well then then you need to you need to find that out are you despising the prophesying are you or would you rather instead of instead of, uh, of listening and taking heed to prophesying are you listening and taking heed to worldly counsel because the man of God seeks wise counsel 
Do you prove all things? Do you, are you holding fast? Because if you're not doing any of that, you're not holding fast to that which is good. You're not doing it. Okay, Paul prays, and I, I was speaking on this, uh, and so if you don't understand it, it's, it's, it's on the list, go find it. Paul prays that we abstain from all appearances of evil. All. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Then Paul prays for something here. I want y'all to listen to this. This is on Paul's heart 24-7. That you allow God to sanctify you holy. I see a lot of people have been talking to their already. I'm sanctified. <laughs> then why would Paul pray that we allow, we allow God, the God of creation, we allow God because He's able, He is faithful, He will finish what He started if we allow God to sanctify us wholly, as so that we will be kept blameless. Remember that over here? What's that first number? Uh, da, da, that the heart establish that the Lord establish your heart unblameable in holiness. And we are sanctified holy and it's so it will keep us blameless. What's that holy is talking about? In spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Another aspect of Trinity three and unity and God can work in us and bring it all and keep our hearts blameless in the day of the Lord Paul says that you pray for those that labor in the field now you know this is a how do we do that do we just do we say we pray for John MacArthur or we pray for Brother, so and so, whatever. No, if we just, Lord, I pray for the laborers in the field, and 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 you're praying for those, and that way you're not. Because I'm gonna tell you something. There's some people out there. I just, I, you might not like it, but they don't. They're not to be involved in this laborers in the field because they're not laboring in the field. They bought the field because they sold out. They own the field. An ox is supposed to be able to eat from the trough, but it never says that the ox is supposed to own the trough. And then Paul prayed at the end that each one of us be read this epistle. Now, we need to really read these epistles. I had a brother ask a question one time. I told him, okay, well, let's go there. I said, get your Bible. I did read it to him. He read it to me. And when he slowed down, he found the truth of the question he was looking for, and I never said a word. I just stopped him, and I said, okay, who does that describe? And when he looked at it, he said, why have I not seen that before? Reading means to become nourished. We need to slow down. We can wolf down. I'm going to tell you something. I, I like to eat. I do. I enjoy my food. And, and don't get me wrong. I really... You remember them old 25 cent McDonald's cheeseburgers? Oh, man, I'd go buy like $2 of them and just... <laughs> but you know what I enjoy more? Sitting down at the table with a full dinner in front of me. Now, I don't know what an ace course meal consists of, but a full meal in front of me. And I like to take my time and cut my meat up if I'm having some meat or Take my time when I get a spoonful of tater and go over and get some gravy on it too, you know, and, and and put it in my mouth and savor it, you know. Take just let the taste just come alive in my mouth.
now. That's how you're supposed to do the Word of God. I feel a lot of our brothers and sisters out there are, are, are dining on fast food and not sitting down at the table that we're supposed to sit at and feasting on the Word of God. And finally again, as he began it, grace be with you. In the end, Paul says, grace be with you. Now, grace is something a lot of us don't really understand. We've been taught did wrong in its in its understanding. A lot of people think that we say grace at the table over a meal. To them, that's what grace is. Grace, by word, God's word, grace is defined as one thing and one thing only. Grace is defined. Now, defined, like I said, is different than definition. De the, the definition of the world can, can be multiple things. The definement of a word is how that word works when it's spoken. Now, grace, spoken of God's grace, is this. It's God's divine intervention. That's it. So when Paul says, may grace be with you, may God's divine intervention be with you. Why? We need that intervention. So we can do all these things. Without God, I can't do any of these. And if I did do one or two in the flesh, it, it ain't going to matter to heal the babies. Okay, in the, uh, be quiet. I can be quiet in the flesh. Not for long, but I can be quiet in the flesh. Uh, I can love in the flesh. But it says here would it be taught the love of God by God. Okay? Uh, so we need this grace. Oh, never render evil evil. Do not return evil for evil. Okay, flesh. Whew, that's a difficult one. But even in the flesh, you can do it. But it's not going to matter. It's not going to count for nothing. It's when we capture the thoughts, allow the Spirit to bridle our tongue. And we don't return evil for evil in word. And then, well, we walk honestly among those unbelievers and we don't return evil indeed. That is grace. That is the grace of God. Second Peter 1, man, do I go there a lot, don't I? He's given us everything needful. We have access to his divine power. We have access to his divine nature. Why? Because without his divine power and his divine nature, I, Brother Anthony, will never become transformed in the image of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. So, that was First Thessalonians. I say, I've been the wife. I've been really enjoying having her read to me. And then we go over it. Uh, I asked her a question when she gets through of what stands out to you in that because there's a lot that really won't stand out because he, he's covering a topic that we don't really deal with around here uh, majorly, uh, and that was because the people saying the resurrection has done this and all that, whatever. whatever. But within it, we pull out, within it, within it, we pull out these nuggets. Pull out these nuggets. This is the first step of Ephesians 5. Be ye followers of God. Walk with a conversation that you used to not even know. So, I'm going to let y'all go. Hey, always, I love you. And I'm praying for those things you need for, and I guarantee you. I started by this. I want to be that that effectual prayer. I want my prayer to be effectual. The thing is, for my prayers to be effectual, your prayers has to be, God, help me overcome. When I pray that, and you pray yours, and God gets involved, it's a powerful, powerful thing that can happen. If it happens to you one time, 
one time, you'll never go buy a McDonald's hamburger again. You'll always want that full table of dining, feasting on the Word of God. Remember, saints, Paul prayed for this one part that was a, that's really not taught anywhere. Because we're taught that we're already sanctified. We're already saved. We're already this. We're already that. If we were, Paul would pray for it. That you and I allow God to sanctify us holy. And so, too, our hearts are kept blameless in spirit, soul, and body. If you're going to pray a prayer for me, that's the one I want you to pray for me for. I want my heart to be kept blameless. So when I stand in the day of the Lord, Everything I've been come, I've, I've become sanctified and pleasing unto God. So I love y'all, praying for y'all as always, and I'll see y'all next time.